welcome, welcome. So glad to have you here. In today's video, we are going to be going over how to create watercolor clip art images inside of Mid Journey, right? So as you can see here, we have a watercolor clip art of a beautiful African-American female. She has nice volume curly hair, right? And watercolor is just simply a type of art, right? That's just the easiest way to explain it. So let's go ahead and get right into it. And you definitely want to stay to the end because I'm going to show you how to actually upscale your images so they can go from this pixelated version to this version here. So you definitely want to stay to the end. Don't want to miss out. All right. So first things first is you're going to head over to G-O-O-G-L-E dot com. Obviously, we all know about Google and you're going to type in Mid Journey Login. First thing you're going to see is www.midjourney.com and you are going to go over to subscription plans. The reason why I have you go to subscription plans so you can know what you're subscribing to, baby. All right. So now that you are in the subscription plan, you have the $10, the $30, the $60, the $120. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single plan, but just know there is a difference between the monthly and the annual cost. But when you're just getting started, go ahead and get started with the basic plan, baby. Even though you ain't basic, you're going to go ahead and get started with the basic plan because you want to learn how to do this, right? And it's a nice, beautiful chart that tells you everything. The main difference is the speed and the time, right? And then you also have a Steph mode as you upgrade into the Pro and Mega plan. And Steph mode basically just means that your browser and your server becomes private, right? So when you're inside of the Discord, which I'm going to show you right now, you have a bunch of open channels here inside of Mid Journey at the bottom where you see the sailboat. And pretty much what it means is that when you're not in Steph mode, people can actually see your prompts. But hey, it is what it is, right? Sharing is caring. So this is exactly how you get to get your subscription plan, right? So you get to go ahead and check it out. It'll ask you to subscribe to a plan. Go ahead and click on midjourney.com slash account. Obviously, I already have an account. So you'll be able to see what account it is. So we'll go ahead and go back to midjourney login. And then when you go here, you type in midjourney. It'll ask you to sign in and all those good things, right? You see this green sign up button. Shout out to the color green. The color green is beautiful. Um, and if you already have an account, you'll just log in, right? And typically your images are created on what you call a Discord server, okay? And I have videos which I'll link below on how to actually get into your own server once you get on Mid Journey. All right, so now that we did that, we got that out the way, let's go ahead and get to how to create these watercolor images, right? So here's my prompt. I'll leave it in the comments below, but go ahead and take this prompt, right? If you want to get images like this. All right, so let me go ahead and break down this prompt and explain what I'm asking it to do. So basically when you're creating images, you just simply want to let the mid journey know exactly what it is that you want to do. And the reason why you want to do that is because you want to make sure that you are prompting to get the actual image that you want. So we're going to break this down a little bit further. As you can see in the beginning part, I'm asking it to give me a watercolor, joyful African-American, right? I want her here to be curly, a darker skin tone. Sometimes they don't get the skin tones right. And I'm just describing what I want her to be wearing, which is a green ball cap on her head. She is wearing a stylish, oversized two-piece pants set. As you can see, uh, it's a little bit of a pants set, but not really. It's not matching. I didn't really tell it to be matching. Obviously, I want her to be holding a phone in her hand. It's kind of big. Maybe it's like an iPhone XL. She also has on gold earrings and bangles, right? So she got a watch on. They didn't really get that right. I do kind of see the earrings, but it also looks like she has some headphones over her head, which is fine. And at the end, I wanted to be on sketch paper, right? Because I wanted to give it the look of a sketch type of white background and just kind of that feel of like a watercolor sketch. And this is just the aspect ratio, which is a three by two, because that is the size that I want to get it in. So the ratio is just the size, right? So you have square, you have rectangle, you have different aspect ratios. So in this case, I'm doing three by two, right? I am in the version 5.2 model, right? Because I like this version better than the V6, but 
I'll go ahead and show you at the end too on the difference between the V6 model, which is the newest model that they have when you're actually creating watercolor versus 5.2, right? So there's still a lot of features I like in 5.2, but V6 has their has their has their pros as well. So this is version 5.2, which you can see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and head down. And the reason why is because I actually wanted to create. So first of all, when I first did this, it always gives you a set of four photos, right? And at the bottom, these four boxes you see on the top and these four boxes you see at the bottom, they all correspond to the four boxes you see here, right? So U1 goes to the top left corner. U2 corresponds to the top right corner. And then you got U3 and U4, right? Bottom, bottom left, bottom right. Very simple. V is just basically, if you like U1 and you want to create a version of that, you could go ahead and click V1, right? And this is just a remix prompt. So you would change something in it. And it's supposed to keep the features the same. So if you didn't want it to her to have on green, maybe you want her to have on yellow, you would just change the yellow. Or if you wanted to change her hairstyle, you would change the hairstyle. If you wanted to change her skin tone, you would change that, right? So that's the whole thing is remixing a prompt. Just think about it as like if you were remixing a song, that's what you would do here in this section, specifically for V1, which corresponds to the top left picture, right? Every time you want to make these pictures big, what you'll do is you'll click on U1, U2, U3, U4. So if I wanted to go ahead and zoom out on U3, I would go ahead and click U3. And it would give me the single picture by itself, right? And if you head on down to the bottom, you will see that it's going to pull that out, right? So here it is. You can see it bigger. I can go ahead and open it up. And one step further is go ahead and open it up in a new tab. You want to open up in a new tab. You go ahead and open it up in a new tab. It will open up in your browser and there you have it. And we'll go over how to save images and all that good stuff. But I just wanted to show you how to actually read your tools, right? And you have all this good stuff here. Very subtle. That's just like the features, how strong you want her facial features to be. So you can play around with that once you get in. And obviously, if you want to upscale, you can. i show you an upscaler that I use, bigjpg.com. So you don't have to really worry too much about that. But I prefer to upscale outside of mid-journey number one because it moves kind of slow when you upscale inside of mid-journey. And then these are the zoom out features, right? So the more you zoom out, the more you see her body. Uh, and it also leaves more room for errors. So you can zoom out 1.5, you can zoom out two times, right? So you click on those buttons and you'll see the picture will zoom out. So I'll go ahead and click it just so y'all can see because I'm a visual person, right? So it's going to go ahead and do its magic. We'll get back down to it, but let's go ahead and go up to the top. So while that's zooming out, what I want to explain is when you're inside of Mid Journey, you actually have these images, right? And if you want to create a set of clip art and you want the images to look very close to each other, there is something you must do. So we call it reference photos. So because I like this specific image, I went ahead and used this as a reference photo, right? So because I'm using this as a reference photo, that means I want my other images to look very similar to her and her face. So you got to pay attention to this part. You definitely don't want to skip, right? And if you want to learn more things about this as well, go ahead and fill out the survey, right? Because we want to get to know you. Fill out the survey for a chance to win $500 and for a chance to join in to learn how to do these exact things that I'm teaching you, right? So because we don't gatekeep around here. So as you can see, this is the link here I used for the reference photo. So let me show you how I went ahead and got that. So if you go ahead and click on the photo, right? And then you right click. You want to go ahead and open this image up in a new tab. So I'm opening it up in a new tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and... So when I click copy image address, it's going to give me the image address to this specific photo, right? So that's basically what I did. Now, I'm not going to actually retype it in, but I am going to show you because I already actually did it, right? So this is what you would do. You would go ahead and go down to the bottom and you want to go ahead and backslash imagine. So every time you want to click 
or create, I shouldn't say click, create a prompt. You always want to hit the backslash and imagine, right? Without doing that, baby, you ain't getting no prompt. So then I'm going to control V or I'm going to copy and paste, right? So now I'm copying and paste that for my reference photo. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy the prompt, right? So I'm going to go ahead and copy this prompt. I typically copy up to the AR, the aspect ratio, and I'm going to paste. Now, this is important because at the bottom of this, you delete this part out. If you don't delete this part out at the end, you are going to get an error. So you want to delete everything after the aspect ratio if you are going to use this prompt, right? You want to delete everything. So now when I click enter, right, I'm going to click the enter button. It's going to give me this right here. So this is what your actual prompt is going to look like. Now, when you're inside of your prompt, you're actually going to want to change the color. So we'll just go ahead and use this. I don't have to anymore because I already have this. So I could just copy and paste this once I get it. But before, because we are doing a demonstration, let's go ahead and just demo it the right way. All right. So instead of me putting green, um, we have pink. Let's change it to yellow. So we're going to give her like all these different types of looks. Right. And I just keep everything else the same. Now you can change the hair and different things like that. So maybe we might change it. Sometimes when you start changing stuff up too much, it changes the images, but it shouldn't. So we'll change it from her holding a phone. Let's see, what, what else do we want her to hold in her hand? A, maybe we'll have her hold a tablet. So we'll have her hold a tablet and let's change it from oversized pants set to maybe an oversized dress to an oversized matching dress. And let's see what we get. So now I'm going to head and click enter. Oh, see, it gave me an error. So something isn't right. All right, so we're going to have to go back up again. And it could be because I already took it. So let me do this copy image address. Let's do this again. All right, we put a comma afterwards. Let's copy this. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. And let's hope it don't give me an error again. And it could be, like I said, because I already did this. So instead of it being pink, let's do yellow. All right, and let's just change it to yellow. And what else did we change? And let's just do a tablet. Let's just hope this one works. It's still giving me an error. So I'm going to just go ahead and dismiss this because I don't know what they're doing. Like, they don't want us to be great. So, but that's essentially how you do it. You just simply take the copy image address and you do that. It's probably because I already took the actual address. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this and copy this. And I'm just going to change it from here. I'm going to just go ahead and change it from here. Let's see what we want her to wear. So we want her to have on a yellow. And then we want to change it from a phone to a tablet. And then I think I want her to wear oversized dress. Right. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter. All right, finally. And I'm thinking it's because I already copied the image address. So I'm going to show you how to do that using this one here just as a clean example because I didn't like that they was giving me an error message twice, right? So we're going to wait for this to generate. While we wait for that to generate, I think I opened this one up in a new tab already too. So I see that here. Yep. So I'm going to redo it and I'm going to do it with that one. All right. So there you have it. She's not wearing a dress. Mid Journey does not listen a lot of times, but as you can see, her facial features are still there. So we took the image here, which is very close to the same image, which was our reference photo, which was this, right? So now we're going to go ahead and just pick a photo that I see that I like. Her hair different. She changed it up some. So let's go ahead and click. And it's, still, it's not even a tablet. I'm telling you, all Mid Journey does not listen sometimes. All right, so we got that one. Um, and then let's do U3, right? The first one, it's giving dreads, but maybe it's a little curly. It's a little further out, so can't see it too good. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and save this. I like this one. You always want to look at the hands. Her hands look like it's a little messed up, but we might get away with it a little bit. So again, we're going to go ahead and open this up. We're going to click Save Image As, and it's going to save to your downloads. And we're just going to save these images. I'm going to save them one by one. 
Again, you just clicking on it, save image as, and you're gonna save it to your download, save it to a folder. I suggest that you stay organized because once you start, you can't stop. And then again, we're gonna click on these and we're gonna save image as, right? We're gonna save the image. All right, so I got all three of these saved, right? So now what I wanna go ahead and do is upload them into my Canva. So I'm gonna go ahead and head over to Canva. This is an actual 3000 by 3000. So when you go in, I have it set to 3000 by 3000 pixels. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add this in here. So I do got this pretty big. So let me zoom out some. And I'm also in the Canva Glow version because you know, I was one of the first million people to get the new features. So go ahead and go over the uploads and then you're gonna go to upload files, right? You're gonna find where your files are on the computer. And as you can see, it's gonna be the most three, the most, oh, wait, hold on. Hold the shift key, make sure you get the, the ones that you want. And it's just gonna be the three right here, right? So this is gonna be the three and I'm gonna just go ahead and just add them in, right, one by one. So I'm just gonna add them in. You click this, uh, it's kind of like a half a square with a plus, and you just add in the pictures. You can also drag them in all at the same time, but I'm just adding them in, adding them in one by one, right? So what I like to do is just zoom out just a little bit so I can see the full square. And now with the Canva Glow, you can actually hit the X button, and you don't even have to see your pane over there, your window pane. So that's perfect. I'm feeling it. It's like it's giving back in the day, 80s hat, nice summer vibes, right? So it's giving a poetic justice Janet Jackson hat, like for sure. I'm really feeling her facial expression in this picture too. I'm going ahead and just zooming out on these. Again, this is the reference photo. So as you can see, it does a pretty good job giving me the same face. So this is how you, you keep it in the family, right? So obviously her hairstyle is different. That's fine because, you know, we like to switch our hair up, right? Right? So all my ladies, leave a comment below if you like to switch your hair up because I know I do. So, yes. Yeah, so here are all the images that we have inside of here. But that's basically how you use the reference photo. So remember, we started with this as the reference photo. And we ended up with all of these images here. Now, you do have to look at the errors that might happen because AI is not perfect. So as you can see here, you have an error, right? It's overall a nice picture. She kind of looked like Rihanna in the face, too. You could easily delete this out, right? You could uh, use the magic edit tool if you go here. To edit, you could erase it. Sometimes it will erase the actual photo. So sometimes that might not work. Or if you got Photoshop skills, or if you really like this image that much, you could go on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R.com and have somebody remove it. But if you have the pro version, everything with a crown inside of Canva is for the pro version. So that's for the people that pay, right? But they do have a free plan. But in the free plan, you can't use the eraser. So you would just click on Magic Eraser. And when you click on Magic Eraser, you could go ahead and use a brush or a click and you could brush the area in which you want to erase and it will let you erase the image. Well, not the image, but it'll let you erase the part that you want to remove. But you always want to pay attention in mid journey for the arms, the feet, the hands, the legs, the eyes, the nose. In this case, her eyes is closed. Her lashes is looking real good though. So if you zoom in, lashes is looking real good. But yeah, so you know, but everything else looks good, right? All the other images, facial features, very close, the same. And this is so, so important. So here is how we upscale, which we haven't even gotten to that. So remember, I said stay to the end and we're going to show you how to upscale, right? We're just going to make it a little bit more cleaner than what it is. And um, I think I'm going to upscale this baby right here because I'm feeling her face and her lashes is looking good. Ooh, and the eyebrows are arched. I love it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and zoom out some, but the fingers is just a little messed up. So I don't like that. So we would have to, we, we wouldn't use this photo. I mean, you could actually crop it if you wanted to, but I don't think I would really use this. Too many fingers going on is just not good, right? 
But we'll go ahead and zoom in just because, you know, I like the way her face is. Almost like she got a nose ring. But wouldn't I use this image because the fingers is jacked up. So that's the only good. That's the only bad thing is like sometimes you get some really good images with the fingers. So you could crop it if you want to as well. So we'll just go ahead and crop it just because, you know, I don't like the way the fingers look and it's going to bother me. So you could just easily crop it out. Now you can't really tell how many fingers it is, right? Let's move it up even more, right? So now you just, you know, it just look like she looking down at something, holding something. You can see the hands a little bit, but not too much, right? You could go ahead and do that. Oh, another thing I'm going to show you is how to remove the background, right? So let's just say you want to make it transparent for your customers, which I highly recommend because they might not be putting it on a white piece of paper. So... If it ain't, it's going to show this white background. So again, if you have the pro version, you just go ahead and click on BG Remover Background Remover, and it's going to remove this background, right? So now, as you can see, there is no background in the back of the image anymore. I always do a white background because a white background is easy to remove and clean without messing up the picture most of the time. So as you can see inside of the prompt, I always do on a white background right? Because just easy to get rid of the background. But don't worry, if you don't have Canva Pro, you could go ahead and head over to google.com and you can find free background removers. They have them everywhere. Just Google free background remover on google.com. All right. So now that y'all know how to remove the background, once you get it into Canva, now we're going to go ahead and upscale. So I want to upscale image number two. So we're going to hit the share button. That's right. The share button. Because again, sharing is caring. Download again. We're going to download page two. We're going to hit done. And we're waiting. Right. So we're waiting for it to download. But while it's doing that, let's go back to the discord. So remember earlier when I said that, uh, when you zoom out, right? So this was the zoom out feature. So this picture here was a closer picture, a closer image. And then when I zoomed out 1.5, as you can see, it starts to give her more, you start to see more of her body. So if I go ahead and click on, what is this, U3, you'll see like her legs is beginning to appear. So the further you zoom out, the more body features you will see. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's not. You just go ahead and do it. It's not going to hurt. This is going to go down to the bottom. And as you can see, she has on shorts, which is cool, right? I like this fit, you know, it's giving camping vibes. So I'm feeling it. But yeah, so that's when you zoom out, which is another great way because you could also add this into the set, right? Her with shorts on and just her with a close up, right? It's the same picture. So that's how you get a two for one. And what you know what a two for one is when you create it one time, but you get to get two images out of it, right? So that's a two for one. And good thing with Mid Journey, you could get a four for one. So let's go back to Canva and see what is going on. Like, it must be a lot of people on today because, like, the image is, is not downloading. Let's see if we could do another one. Maybe it's the photo. I'm not sure. I got to show y'all how to upscale because upscaling is so important when it comes to images. At least for me, it is. All right, so maybe we'll do number four. All right, we go ahead and go to download again. Well, matter of fact, let me refresh because sometimes you got to reload the site. Obviously, technology is not perfect. We all know that. So just bear with me. We almost done. So we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and download that picture again. So we're going to download. Hopefully it saved it. Hold on. Hold on. It did not save the new images. So wait a minute now. Hold on. Reload it again. I might have to go back home because especially when you got a new version of something, you know, it's always it's always bugs. So. I can't even find my photo that was here no more that, that showed you the before and after. All right, no problem. So let's go back in and just upload again. That's why you got to save because, listen, when you don't save, your work don't get saved. And the, way, and the way you save in Canva is you go ahead and hit the file and you hit save, right? Always want to make sure that you're saving. It's supposed to automatically save, but you can't ever trust anything, right? So again, we're going to click on page two and we're going to go ahead and download it. So now that we're downloading it, I'm going to go ahead and show you the difference in the images from the other ones. Just so you can see, 
So we downloaded page two, and now you're going to go to bigjpg.com, go to select images. And as you can see, I already upscaled that one. It's going to be inside the downloads, the most recent one. You could rename it so you'll know, right? Rename your fo your files, I suggest, however you do your saving and your organizing, right? So now that you see it, you're going to click on this blue start button. When you click on start in the free version, you can only do it four times at the highest level. If you get a paid version, I think it's something like $9.99 a month. You could also only do two images at a time when you're upscaling in the free Free version, but it works, right? If you got time, you got time. Four times at the highest, right? And then we're going to go ahead and click start. So as you can see, it says uploading. So that means that it is downloading. You see the blue bar going. So as that's going, I'm going to go back over to the design and I'm going to just go ahead and drop in the two images that so we could compare them side by side, right? So I'm going to just go ahead and do my frame. And I'm just going to add them side by side. So if you go ahead inside of um, inside of Canva, you search front frame. These are grids. This is how you can actually get images. You know, you could drag images inside. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this one inside. And then I'm going to go to photos and I'm going to get the clean one right here. When I say clean, all I'm saying is it's just the one that I upscale, right? So... Now you can see the difference. You see the pixelation in the face here versus here. That's what the AI upscaler allows you to do every single time. So you definitely want to upscale the images. And you do that by using the bigjpg.com. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and show y'all that. And then you can see it everywhere, right? From the hands, the hands, all of that. And you always want to zoom in on your pictures because you want to make sure you're looking at the flaws to see if it's something that you can clean up. Maybe, maybe not. And again, I always remove the background. Simply hit background remover. If you don't have the Canva Glow feature, it's going to be somewhere on your toolbar at the top. It's, it looks very similar to this. And you'll go ahead and click on edit or photo and you'll hit the background remover. You'll see it in some capacity. Again, here as well, you just now you just go through and you just remove the background. So it'll take off that water splatter from the back, which is no problem. Because if you like the splatter, you could always get it back in. If you go to elements and you search, uh, let's see, I think it might be under splatter, might be under watercolor, but yeah, you here it is, right? So watercolor brush strokes splatter, right? So if you want to add that back in, you certainly can. Again, you have to have the pro version. But if you don't have the pro version to use these specific ones, anything with a crown has to have a pro, but they do have free ones. As you can see here, these are all free. And it'll even tell you, right, free. And you definitely want to look at the licensing when you're using any of the features inside of it. This is a plant of paint splatter but the way to just make it simple is you're going to click on these filter buttons and filter bars and you're going to go ahead and filter by free once you click the check next to free it's going to only show you free elements inside of canva which is beautiful because now you don't have to worry about getting an error message when you attempt to download something and you ain't got the pro version right so again let's go ahead and look at the splatter if you wanted to add that back and you could so I'm going to zoom out just to show you. You would just go ahead, add it wherever you want it to go. And then you could just position it, move it to the back. And now you have the splatter effect, right? Background is removed. And then you definitely just want to you can move the image around. And then you could also close in just a little bit so you could get both of these highlighted. And now you could actually group these together, right? And you would just hit group. So now it moves all together. And when you save it, you still want to save it as a transparent background, which will go over. And pretty much when you do a transparent background, it just allows your users to not see the color in the back, meaning the white in the back. So to easily see, if I make this a yellow back, well, that's not a good example. Let's see, I make this gray, right? 
you're not going to see the white box around it because I removed the background. So this makes it transparent, which is good because now once your customer has it, they can put it on any background. This is meant for digital, right? But they can have it on any color background. So it's a great way to test it out to make sure that you got the background out and how it would look. But that's pretty much what you'll do, right? So we'll go ahead and put it back to white background. But that is also how you add in some actual features if you wanted to keep the watercolor look. So let's go check on our images and see if it's upscale. It is. So we're going to go ahead and download. So we're going to download the second one and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go ahead and look at the difference in the image then versus now, before and after, however you want to call it. So it is uploading. We're going to go back to chat GPT. All right. And we're going to do the same thing. Let's bring this up and we're going to add a page because we want to go ahead and add in the clean image that we just downloaded from bigjpg.com and we'll go ahead and upload the upscale image so once we upload the upscale image it is going to go in and i want you to keep in mind too sometimes if the image is too large because i think the file size for canva is 29 megabytes sometimes when you upscale it it will do that but don't worry you could just like pretty much put it into a uh, like lower the actual megabytes inside of like a free converter and you wouldn't have to worry about that. But that doesn't happen often. But if it does, no worries. All right. And I could already see the difference just from not even zooming in. I could tell like the face is way more vibrant. So we're going to duplicate this just because for time six, we want to work smarter, not harder. So I'm going to move this in and I'm going to just copy this one right into this frame right here. Right. So let me move this one back in. And I'm only doing this just for side-by-side -side purposes. So we're going to zoom in as well here, just so you can see the difference. Because you have to zoom in to really understand how important this is. All right, so now that we're zoomed in, you can see the difference again. Beautiful shirt. Ugh, much more cleaner, much more cleaner. Now, of course, we, we would crop this out, like I said, because we don't want these, like, all these chicken fingers like that's what this giving chicken fingers so right here we have again more so pixelated more so not still a nice it's like a fine art watercolor this is like watercolor it's still watercolor right but this is like a fine art watercolor all right so this is actually really good so there you have it before and after all right so now that you have your images you would just go ahead and put the ones that you want after you upscale it again you bring it back into the document and then you just go ahead and you have all your upscale images in there now you would just save them to a drive if you don't want them to have access to open it up in the canva file but if you did i'm going to show you how to do it both ways so if you wanted your uh, customers to be able to access the images you would go ahead and click template link you always want to do a template link because if you don't do a template link and they get access to your file, they can actually make changes inside of your document while you're there, right? So you would go ahead and click create template link and you would just hit copy. And this is the link that you would put. And obviously I have a video that you can watch as well on how to actually create a PDF so you can actually link your links inside of the PDF. So when your customers get your document, they can download it. But if you don't want to do that option, all you would simply do is click share. You would go to download and you would make sure you check this nice little button right here that says transparent background, but you do have to have the pro version. If you don't have the pro version, you can always remove the background there. Free background uh, transparent background removers, like I said, outside the Canva, but it just takes a little bit more time because you have to go to another workspace, but it's still free 99. So if you don't want to pay the Canva fee, it's totally possible. So you're going to go ahead and click transparent background. Everything is highlighted. So it's going to download everything for you into a zip folder and you'll just go ahead and click download. And once you get those, you can move it into like a Google Drive or something of that nature. And then you could just share that link to your customers. Again, there is a video on this page. So you could go ahead and check that out on how to deliver the files to your customers. So that is pretty much how you keep it in the family.
how you keep it in the family. All right. So now we could go ahead and zoom in and just take a look. One reference photo. One reference photo, yeah. Images. Look at the face. The facial features are there. Look, the facial features are there for one reference photo. Just going back just to show y'all. That's all you need. Right. So definitely there. Sometimes it changes up, but you get to choose. Obviously, we're not using this the extra hand unless you get it out. However, nice set. Right. So now you have a nice watercolor clip art set. You can add some elements in here. Right. Some some tablets, some phones, like just individual stuff. And you just make as many as you can. What I like to do is you could change the outfits up, the hats up. Uh, you could make it a head scarf. So just just one more bonus because, you know, a lot of people on here like I, I I make these videos because I truly love y'all like I do so let me go ahead and all right let's do let's do this one right here so we we instead of us giving her a uh a hat a boy cap we'll give her a head scarf wrap right so we we're gonna go ahead and give her a head scarf wrap all right again you definitely want to delete out everything after the aspect ratio so instead of her having a bull cap on we're going to give her a pink head wrap on her head right so we'll keep it pink we'll keep it pink and we just gonna go ahead and click enter right we're gonna go ahead and click enter and we'll give her that oh i already see the head wrap i already see it uh there it go there it go, there it go, there it go. As you can see, her features look a little bit different here. So you want to see which ones closely resemble. And it's probably this one right here. So I would do U3. U3 is the closest. So I would, again, you always want to double click. And then you'll just save the image, right? You would just right click it. After you double click it, you right click it. And then you save it. Um... So we just went ahead and gave her a head scarf, right? And then we go back over to Canva, back in our same workspace, get out the grid view. And we're going to go to uploads, upload that new picture. And we're going to look at it side by side, right? Because huh, we want to make sure it's given face. And when I say face, given similar face, right? So we're going to go ahead and... I don't know what she got going on with her hand, though, but she got a phone in one, I guess a tablet in another. But yeah, so as you can see, facial features still there. There we go. Facial features is still there. Facial features is still there. So looks really, really good. And yeah, so that is how you would just change it up. Obviously, her hair is different. That's fine because <laughs> different days, different looks. But that is how you would just change some simple features up and you would just keep changing it, right? So give it a diverse set of uh, clip art. And again, you would just go ahead and go to file and you want to click save because you want to make sure your changes are being saved. And even just from looking from here, you could tell like all of the facial features pretty much look the same, right? On the actual images. So it looks really good. I really like this set. And you would just go ahead and do all those things that I said and get it out to your customers. So if you like this video, please share, like, comment, and subscribe. You know what to do. Don't forget to check out the survey. Fill out the survey because you enter a chance to win $500. Share this out with as many people as you can. Five to 10 people preferably if they want to learn how to make clip art and monetize clip art from mid-journey, right? So thank you all so much and comment below and let me know what else are you looking for? What do you want to see me make or create or teach? Because that's what I'm here for. Again, don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. And for those of you who stay to the end, you see what you got when you stay to the end. All right. Thank you. all Have a great night. Great day. Great evening. Great morning. Whenever. I don't know when you're watching the video, but thank you again. And again, don't forget to share, comment, like, and subscribe.